Good morning, Crosswell First Time Methodist Church. This is your pastor's son, uh, Nathaniel Bone, and uh, I thank you uh, for joining us this morning. And uh, I uh, also am wanted to let you know that I'm wearing red uh, in honor of Pentecost Sunday, uh, and uh, it is all, it is a uh, custom to wear red uh, on the Sunday of Pentecost. Thank you, Nathaniel, for giving us the welcome and the introduction. You may have noticed that uh, both Nathaniel and myself are wearing red in observance of Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. And they were encouraged to uh, go into the world and share the good news of Jesus Christ and His resurrection. And today we end the, the season of Easter and we begin the Pentecost season uh, with Pentecost Sunday. And so it is our hope and prayer that you will continually be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Before we make uh, a few announcements, I wanted to give you an update on our prayer list uh, before Lewis does that later in the service. We wanted to extend Christian sympathy to the family of Randy Bond and the death of his brother, Steve, who lived in Greenville, South Carolina. Please keep that family in your prayers. We also want to let you know that as we asked for a prayer for Earl and Lynn McClellan's daughter, Shelley, last week, that her surgery was successful, but we ask that you continue to keep Shelley in your prayers as she goes through the next few months of treatment and, uh, and deals with her, her uh, health. Mr. Howard Mercer Sr. had a procedure done this week and we ask that you continue to pray for him. And Mr. Bill Matherly will begin treatments this coming week. And so please keep Bill in your prayers. We want you to know that uh, today, on May the 31st, 2020, from two to four, we invite you to do a drive-by celebration of the ministry of, Lewis, of Dr. Lewis Davis and his family. And we ask that you would come through the main street entrance and then turn in the very first uh, drive to the left and then you will be guided as to how to come through the covering uh, outside the doors of the sanctuary and not only will you be able to uh, express your appreciation to the Davis family by offering them cards and gift cards and monetary things to celebrate their ministry among us, but I will be there as well under the, uh, under the covering and I will be handing out uh, communion elements that have already been blessed. So we invite you to come by and receive the gifts of God's grace and mercy and say a word of appreciation uh, to the Davis family for their ministry among us. We want you to know that tomorrow on June 1st, our task force, which has around 20 people on it from the church, uh, has decided to try to open up our summer school program we know that uh, there are still some concerns about the COVID-19, but we are under strict uh, guidelines of the CDC and the state agencies, and we will be uh, doing everything in our power to keep the germs uh, held back and uh, keep the children and the workers safe. And we will have strict uh, opportunities for, for that to uh, be a successful program and uh, we just ask for your prayers as we try to open the summer school and for all those who are attending and those who are working that uh, ministry. The task force will meet again on June the 15th, which will be two weeks from tomorrow. And at that time, we will reevaluate as to our next steps of returning to live worship. We feel pretty certain that there will be strict guidelines for our return to physical worship, uh, such as masks, as we do with the 
after school, the uh, after school summer program and uh, social distancing as much as we possibly can. But uh, we will have an announcement for you uh, after the 15th of June as we make the decision as to how to progress after that. You may have noticed uh, about an hour prior to this video being uh, loaded that uh, there was a post on the church Facebook that gave you an opportunity to post your pictures or your videos of yourself wearing red today in observance of Pentecost Sunday. And I hope that if you didn't catch that or were unable to do that, that you will go back and do that as we celebrate together wearing red in observance of the Holy Spirit's presence among us. On this Pentecost Sunday, as we have done every time since we've begun online worship, I will light this candle on the table beside me as a symbolic gesture of the Holy Spirit's presence, uh, God, the, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we will be reminded that God is always with us, even when times when we feel alone or afraid. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the whole house where they were staying. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When this sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee. And yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Parthia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Syria. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Christians and Arabs, Dian Bukbunyan, Ikob Ntemmo Etorode Akwabasi. Les oímos hablar en nuestras lenguas las maravillas de Dios. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They were all astounded and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. Thank you. 
time we've had this morning as we've been able to worship and uh, uh, together and to praise our great God and you could probably tell where I'm at right now uh, I just felt like needing to do the prayer here in this place together today and and maybe you've seen the uh, uh, spot where you sit or um, you know where a family might be sitting or a good uh, close neighbor um, this is such a beautiful beautiful place and so let's just have a word of prayer here. We want to continue to remember those that's on our hearts and our minds, of course, uh, those that are hurting right now uh, in, in many different ways and for many different reasons. Uh, we know that there are several people who uh, just need that touch from the Lord um, um, and just to have that peace, just to have, um, you know, just that, that overwhelming joy. I know uh, this time... There's been many days that I've just kind of, um, as I shared one time, you know, it was nice maybe to have a little break, but it's gone, this is a long time, isn't it? Uh, and, and so maybe there's a lot of us who are hurting, uh, just having that, that deep sense of needing and wanting to be together. Um, so let us pray for each other. Let us pray for the Pritchards as they continue to heal uh, those who are hurting, uh, those who have got uh, uh, hurt at cancer's back. We know that there's a few people that is just... Uh, just need to touch, uh, touch of the Lord right now. Uh, we have uh, two or three memorial services at least uh, that uh, are gonna be planned as soon as we open back up. And, and so we'll uh, just, just keep each other in our prayers. And, and we may not know the names and situations right now, but we know that God does and God will honor those prayers. So let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you so much for who you are, Lord. We thank you for your love and for your grace, for your power, for the way you move and the way you work, Lord. Lord, we know that during this time, it's uh, <laughs> been a time we didn't think we would ever go through and, and it's still kind of unbelievable. But we just ask right now, Lord, that even, even during those moments, those, those times that we have that, that's painful, 
uh, because we're, we're, being, we're separated right now uh, and not being able to come into uh, this church building, Lord, we pray that for your Holy Spirit to, to remind us again and again and again that we are the church together. Wherever we're at, we are the body of Christ. And so for that, Lord, we're thankful. We, we are thankful for Jesus who binds us together, who knows exactly what we need and when we need it. So, Lord, we pray right now that you hear our prayer. Lord, we, we lift up those who are hurting. We lift up those who are, who are sick. Uh, we lift up the Pritchard family and the many, countless others who, who are affected in many ways of the COVID-19. Lord, we, we know that there are many who've been out of work. Uh, many's had to uh, uh, think about what they can do and should be doing there, during this time. So we just pray, Lord, for your continued peace uh, as we begin to reopen, as we begin to plan here of how we can come back together and win. So, Lord, we just pray for your guidance. We pray for your, your healing touch on those who need it right now. We pray for your joy, your hope, your peace, your love to be poured out into each of our hearts here in this moment as we worship together. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We pray all of this, Lord, in that mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Hey everybody, Doug here today. Uh, I'm here sitting in my office and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Pentecost. What does that mean? Where did it come from? All the different things. And once again, Sally here has been reading, studying, and man, she's going to explain it all today so that you all know. Ain't that right, Sally? Sally, what are you, what are you, what are you We're filming the thing on Pentecost. What are you doing with my phone? What, what are you doing? Hey, what, what are you? What are you? You're not reading? No. <sighs> what? I thought you was read. We were supposed to talk Pentecost. Yeah, you know that. What were you watching? You was, you was watching Aladdin. What? Aladdin has nothing to do with Pentecost. What it does? Oh, now uh, we're going to take a break here, kids, because I got to hear this one. So now, if you can explain to me how Aladdin somehow has something to do with uh, Pentecost, I will be impressed with you, Sally. Okay, go ahead and explain it to me. Okay, yes, I know the story of Aladdin. It's about a young man that finds this magic lamp, and he rubs the magic lamp, and a genie comes out. So, okay, I, how does that have to do with Pentecost? The lamp. The la How do you get the lamp has to do with Pentecost? Oh. 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess, you know, the old saying, out of the mouths of babes becomes knowledge, but I never really thought about that. That is a fantastic point. And Pentecost... As Sally told me, they talk about the disciples got ready to speak to all these people and this flame came down and landed on their tongues, this fire, and they were able to speak in tongues and they were communicate to everybody and 
many people heard the stories of Jesus and were saved. And we consider that to be the birth of the church. And I was kind of like, well, how do you get that from Aladdin? And I was trying to like, and then she pointed out the lamp. And I was like, well, the magic lamp. But she points out that if you've seen the movie, those are the kind of lamps that people used back in biblical times. They were just in a little shape. They had oil and they lit them and they gave light. Now, Sally referred back to John. See, John one time was writing that Jesus called John the Baptist a lamp. And Sally said that Pentecost should remind us all Christians to be lamps. And that really kind of makes a little sense because, see, we celebrate Pentecost because that's the Holy Spirit coming down. That was that flame that gives us that ability. And so she said, we're all kind of like a lamp, like Jesus called John the Baptist. And so we're kind of like this candle, okay? See, here's this candle, and a candle doesn't do anything. I mean, you, you look at it, you can see it, but it doesn't serve a purpose until you have the flame. You got right. And then once you put the flame in there and light that candle or that wick, what happens, Sally? We give off light. You can see that now, can't you? Well, Sally pointed out that we should all be that way. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, we should be able to shine. And that light should, that light is the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit gives us ability to be seen by all. Also, I have to admit, you were right on about the other thing. Yes, you're, you're pretty much right most of the time, but I, this was pretty good. Uh, as kids, we know that to be true because as a child, we're taught a classic, classic Bible song. Aren't we, Sally? You know what that song is, don't you? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's right. And as Christians, that's what we should always do. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we should let our light shine, just like this candle so that all the world can see and so that we can bring that hope and that joy of Christ to everybody. I have to say, Sally, you did a good job today. You really did teach me something and probably taught the boys and girls out there. I never would have thought about that. No, I don't think you need to watch more Disney movies to learn more. I, you know, you just got lucky once. I, oh. But I hope that you all letting your light shine out there today, boys and girls, because that light is what gives everyone else encouragement in this world. And we all have that in us. And that's that Holy Spirit. So let your light shine in these upcoming weeks and these upcoming days. Let everybody know that God loves them and you love them too. As always, we love you. Look forward to seeing you good soon. And we miss you, don't we? And we still miss you. And we'll be together again, won't we? That's right. So until then, love y'all. Say your prayers. Wash your hands. We love you. Bye. Okay, Sally, let's, they, I think they saw you. You did good. You're a good kid. You did good. Oh, I love you. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. We hear these words. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Then suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as if fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The song we're about to sing is a brand new song by Elias Dummer. It's called God is Good. It reminds us that even when we can't see it or don't even feel like saying it, that God
God is still working for our good. He's still in our midst. The Holy Spirit guides us and reminds us to be His hands and feet in the world, to work for His good so that we can be more than conquerors through Him. Even in troubled times, God is still good. Let's all remember that. for Crossville First United Methodist Church. We not only want to extend our appreciation to those who are listening, who are part of our membership or our community, also those who are listening worldwide through the internet. Today on the broadcast, it will be May the 31st, 2020, Pentecost Sunday in this particular year. Pentecost Sunday is known as the birthday of the church. It is when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon those apostles as they gathered together, waiting instruction from Jesus where to take the ministry that he had begun with them uh, three or four years prior to that. We also uh, encourage you to wear red on this Pentecost Sunday. Red is the liturgical color of the season of Pentecost. It is symbolic of the Holy Spirit's presence among and in God's people. 
And it is our hope and prayer that you will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, not only today on this Pentecost Sunday, but throughout every day as you endeavor to follow Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. The word Pentecost comes from a Greek word meaning 50. It is in reference to 50 days following the festival of the Passover, a Jewish holiday. Pentecost is known as one of the harvest festivals of the early Jews, and many of them continue to celebrate it this very day. We in the Western Church identify Pentecost Sunday as the birthday of the church after Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus uh, sent the Holy Spirit to be present among God's people, particularly those apostles who continued the ministry that they had started with Jesus in the years before that. But now they were given the supreme obligation of being the ones who carried out the work and ministry of Jesus to the world. In many ways, this resembles our own calling from the Lord, as we are called by God to continue the ministry of Jesus, even in the 21st century and beyond. We are called to be the church. We are called to be instruments of God's hope, love, and peace to a broken humanity. Today on this Pentecost Sunday, it is our prayer that you will be filled with God's Spirit. That as you see everyone wearing red apparel, that you'll be reminded that the Holy Spirit is always present among uh, the human beings. I remember growing up as a child thinking that the day of Pentecost had just begun on that event that was recorded in the book of Acts chapter 2. Yet, as I study, I am reminded that the Jews had many celebrations that followed the 50th day after the Passover festival. Nevertheless, we celebrate this particular Pentecost recorded in Acts chapter 2 because a magnificent thing happened as God poured out the Holy Spirit upon those apostles and those who had gathered to hear the word directly from God. God gave them the ability to speak in another language that was unknown to them in order to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all of those who were gathered who spoke a different tongue than they did. The thing that I wanted you to be reminded of this day is that the Holy Spirit is not an object to be controlled, nor is it one to be manipulated is the Holy Spirit something that blows in and out of our lives, but it is a constant, the Holy Spirit is a present, constant reminder of God's presence in our lives every single day. No matter where we are in our relationship to God, no matter how we may try to separate ourselves from being faithful to God's call upon our lives, the Holy Spirit nevertheless never leaves us. The Holy Spirit has always been present and in existence with the Holy Trinity, even since before the beginning of the creation of the world. What a wonderful message that is to all of us who desire to continue to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ on this Pentecost Sunday and the days that follow. The story is told that the apostles were gathered together in one place. I remember growing up as a child thinking that the importance of the story is that they had gathered physically in one house to be among like-minded persons. Particularly during the days of COVID-19 when we are sheltered in place, people in the church are scattered in different homes and different communities and different areas. That the message that the writer of Acts 
identified as the same author of the Gospel according to Luke. The main message that that writer wanted to convey to us here in the 21st century and all those who will hear is that they were all together in one accord. They were like-minded. They were committed to be the church together. They had committed their lives to love one another and live in peace and harmony with one another in spite of their differences of opinion. The thing that held them together as a community of faith is their common belief in Jesus Christ and the loyalty that they had to him and to his philosophy of life, his way of living. That's a great word for all of us today when we have separated ourselves in so many different subcategories. Even as I give this message this day, I'm reminded of the old joke or the riddle that uh, circulated many years ago when I was a child. The riddle goes something like this in a question form. How do we know that the apostles all drove Hondas? And the answer being that the scriptures record that they were all in one accord. I'm not a very good joke teller, but I think that's hilarious. But the point is that one of the translations, or many of them, record that the apostles that gathered there and all of those who followed Jesus were all in one accord. I think that's a better translation than the one that I typically read from the being in one place physically is a lot different than what the intention, I believe, of the author was. That they were all together with one accord. That they were united in purpose and meaning and direction. That they were in one accord and in harmony, emotionally and spiritually. Grasping and adhering to the call of upon their lives to be the church. And on this Pentecost Sunday, that is a great reminder to all of us in the 21st century that we too are called to be in one accord. That even though we may have differences of opinion, the thing that binds us all together is our common belief and allegiance to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We are God's church in the world around us. This is particularly challenging in the day through which you and I are living in 2020. We find ourselves in the middle of racial tensions that have been heightened by recent uh, events all around our country. Our heart grieves and is saddened by those tensions that lead on God's people. We continue to be uh, divided politically. It seems as though we have thrown out our common sense. Like the old saying says, we have thrown out the baby with the bathwater. We have become more attached to our political ideology than we are to loving one another and respecting one another's opinions even when they differ significantly from that of ours. We see that there is estrangement in families and friends and colleagues. There are disagreements among the human race, particularly over the response to the COVID-19 virus. Even among people in the church, we find that there are deep, disagreements about how we should conduct ourselves as a church. Are we staying too close? Are we staying close too long? Are we opening up too soon? And even though I can appreciate all sides and appreciate the differences of opinion among God's people, the thing that saddens my heart is that we have taken this to a new low level of allowing that to cause division in our relationships with one another. Name-calling 
and placing less value upon those who disagree with us have been the predominant theme among the human race. And I feel this is not God's intention for the people called the church, the body of Christ. There is anger and resentment, hostility and even hatred among those who are in the human race. Broken relationships abound everywhere. We human beings have dug our heels in the ground, so to speak. We have become more and more headstrong, insistent upon our own way. We have become unable or unwilling to admit when we are wrong or when we have hurt someone else. We want things to be the way that we want. And we could care less whether the other person gets his or her way. We have refused to be tolerant of others or their way of thinking, their viewpoint. We are not really listening to one another to hear what is at the heart of our belief system or our values. We choose to remain to be closed minded. We are not open to new ideas or new philosophies or ways of conducting our lives. And sometimes our refusal to be open-minded about the way we conduct ourselves or the way we think about life and our discipleship leads to hard-heartedness and callousness of heart. It leads us to be stuck and stagnant in our relationship and we no longer grow in discipleship. We insist in wanting to be right all the time, even when we know really deep down in our heart and our mind that what we have expressed or the thing that we have done is really the wrong way to go. I remember one of the greatest pieces of advice I believe that I give to couples as I premarital counsel of them is one that applies to every relationship in life is that sometimes we are called to be the peacemaker, the one who reaches out to make the relationship righted, even when we don't feel that we are the one who has caused the broken one. It takes a person of deep spiritual conviction and faith and maturity to be the one who stands up and makes makes the relationship right when it is broken. Oftentimes you and I are called to step out of our comfort zone and to be the one to apologize when things go awry, even when the other person cannot admit to his or her fault in the brokenness of the relationship. Being the one who is able to say, I'm sorry, I apologize that we have this rift between us. It shows that it demonstrates a great amount of maturity and growth in discipleship and being more Christ like in our relationship to one another. This morning, I am called to examine my own life in those areas. How am I contributing to the healing? of the brokenness of the human race? Or am I one by my own steadfastness of thinking that I want things to be the way that I have designed them to be in thinking that the other person is not as intelligent as I am or they are not as informed as I am to cause a greater divide between us or among us? I challenge us, I challenge us all this day to ask God to reveal to us the ways in which we are contributing to the brokenness of the human race, and ask God to reveal to us how we can improve God by our allegiance and our faithfulness to Christ's likeness, having the mind and the heart of Jesus in our relations with other people. Perhaps today, more than at any other history of the human race, 
we are called to be in one accord. In spite of our differences of opinion, we too can align ourselves in unity with our common experience being that of our allegiance and our faithfulness to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, not only of the individual person, but of the community of faith, the body of Christ, the church. I think that's a good word for all of us this morning, and I ask you to receive it in the name of Jesus Christ, who offers the spirit of reconciliation to all those who are broken it's interesting to me that this particular day of Pentecost recorded in Acts 2 not only led to the growth of individuals, but it focused those early believers called the church to a means where they were focused upon evangelism and faithful discipleship. tempted themselves to grow in our, their relationship to Jesus Christ as an individual, but that they were called to live out their witness to those around them. And the response was remarkable. Because of the change wrought in them by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that swept through them like a great wind in the house in which they were assembled. We are told at the end of chapter 2 of Acts that thousands were added to the number daily, all because they were open and receptive to the Holy Spirit moving in and through them. I believe we not only should long for, for that to happen in our church today, in, or should I say in the Lord's church today, not only should we long for this to happen in local congregations, but that we should long for the day when our words, our thoughts, and our actions will be a great role model in order that others will find a relationship with Jesus Christ and His church through the way that we have conducted ourselves. Pentecost indeed is church. And I ask that we pray together today that we continue to bring spiritual rebirth to the church in the 21st century, particularly the congregation in which we are a part of. I leave you this day with these statements, statements of, that are emphatic things that I believe in wholeheartedly and I know that the Lord is calling us to emulate. We are to be reminded today that we are the church of Jesus Christ. We are called to be different from the world around us. We are called to be a beacon of God's light in a world that is broken by the darkness of the enemy. We are called to be the example, to be a role model that leads others to a relationship with God in His church. We are called to be His church. I invite you this morning to allow the Holy Spirit to fill your life on this Pentecost Sunday. And we invite you to be reminded that Pentecost is the birthday of the church. And today, God is calling us to be reborn as a community of faith, as the body of Christ. To be reminded that as on the day of Pentecost, recorded in Acts 2, that the Holy Spirit is wanting to blow through our existence in order that through our example, and through the evangelism and faithful discipleship that we have through our prayers and our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that the whole world will come to Jesus and that they will accept 
Him as their Lord and Savior. And that we will continue to be a role model of God's love and light and broken humanity. Thank you, and we love you all. We pray God's richest blessings upon you. Goodbye. Amen, amen. What a wonderful, uh, beautiful message we've heard today and the singing and and just uh, the time of worship where we've been able to praise our great, great God. I hope you don't mind me just showing a little bit of uh, the sanctuary, uh, as you can tell, uh, as it's been for a little while. It's a little empty, um, um, but uh, we know that uh, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is here in this place as the Spirit of the Lord is with you. And so... I just wanted to uh, show you this, knowing that, as we've said before, and, and not to keep saying it, to run it in the ground, but may you today be the church. May you go out these doors. May you go out the doors wherever you're behind right now and tell the good news. Tell the good news of what you've heard today, what you've seen today, and take it out into the world and share that with each and every person that you can. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.